Howdy folks. Ah, chapter five. The early years. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's a challenge when you when you go into a prison ministry, any any ministry, and you have a call. Uh, you know, you want to be you want to be in the plan and purpose and will of God, and so uh, uh, we we had senior people that we asked advice of, and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, by now we ha we are established in Linden, and uh, uh, we're just uh, delighted to have specific places that uh, we are going to. Uh, we are busy, but at the same time, I'm I'm uh, finding part-time work uh, in Linden. I'm finding uh, uh, work as a truck driver, delivering petroleum to farmers. Uh, if we are going to be in in uh, British Columbia, my brother will always have a job for me. If we are going to be in Manitoba, we are going to have a person that will give me work. And so God was just wonderful uh, in, in providing for us because support for the ministry, even though we had written many, many letters uh, and, and there was support coming in, but uh, we still were not attached to a registered charity a uh, large organization, and so uh, we were we were still uh, battling along uh, in the in the uh, uh, support and the uh, economic issues, uh, but delighted to be busy in prison ministry. And uh, all of a sudden, this this uh, scripture in Timothy becomes alive, and it and it means something special. Uh, it, it talks there at one place about the soldiers and the athletes and the farmers. And uh, uh, I just marvel at how the Lord would often use parables. And so uh, in this particular chapter, I want to use some parables uh, to, to talk about how the Lord worked in our lives. But right now, I'd like to sing a song called Soldiers, Athletes, and Farmers. Good soldiers must endure hardships of all kind they don't mess with things in this life follows orders now and pleases the one who enlisted him for the fight he thinks not of himself or the comforts he could have but he thinks of the ones he could save Yes, he thinks of the ones he could save. Well, the athlete trains and practices hard. He is a man of hard work. Over and over, he follows routine training sessions he dare not sure. He knows he must play and compete by the rules if he ever hopes to win. If he ever hopes to win. The hard-working farmer works out in the field and plants his seed in the ground. And he has the faith it will grow and yield a crop of the very same kind. But he must be first to partake of that crop in order for his faith to grow in order for his faith to grow. Well, we were so delighted to have places uh, if, when we would be in certain areas of ministry, there would be people there that would give us part-time work that we could uh, uh, make our way uh, from day to day, month to month. Uh, we were just so delighted that we were involved uh, in ministry uh, with Western Prison Outreach. And, uh, um, you know, as, as we were carrying on in that 
outreach. Of course, more and more study goes on. I, I can identify at this point for sure with the preacher when he was asked, how long does it take for you to prepare a message? And he said, 30 years. Well, that's what goes on in, in ministry. Uh, you never quit. Uh, learning more and, and reading and meditating upon the Word and so on and so forth. And, and I realize that prison ministry is a special ministry in itself because uh, there are just certain things that you cannot do in terms of reporting in ministry and so on and so forth. It's things that you can't do that they can do in other missions and so on. Uh, uh, but, you know, one of the places that I worked at especially in Manitoba, and you may wonder why all these harnesses and saddles. Well, cowboying horses and cows is still very much in my system. And uh, in Manitoba, there was an outfit that I have worked horses for for many, many uh, years, a number of years through the 90s. And uh, of course, we would go to festivals and cowboy church and different places where we would sing and solicit su support and so forth. Uh, and so you you hear of, of parables and, and people comparing things. And, and uh, I wrote a song one time called The Good Shepherd uh, because I know there have been songs written about how they see Jesus Christ as a pickup man at a rodeo maybe. Uh, they, they, they see Jesus Christ in, in certain ways. I remember uh, hearing a baseball pitcher say at one time, I... Uh, being a believer, he said, I pitch so well because I pitch as hard as I can because I know that if Jesus was on the mound, he would pitch as hard as he could. And so here's a parable called The Good Shepherd. Well, some folks may see Jesus as a cowboy. Others see him as a real good man. Many see him as a hellfire preacher. Still others just a babe in Bethlehem. To me, Jesus is the good shepherd. The way and the truth and the life. He leads me beside quiet water. Restores my soul and guides in the path of right. Well, come, cowboys sometimes are open like to chase things. One good man cannot save us all from wrong. And babies don't stay small and in a manger as the Christ child in the great old Christmas song. No, to me, Jesus is the good shepherd. The way and the truth and the light Oh, he leads me beside quiet waters Restores my soul and guides in the path of right Even though I walk through deep dark valleys His rod and staff keep me within the fold he keeps me fed in spite of those who shun me. Goodness and love, my heart just overflows. Oh, to me, Jesus is the good shepherd, the way and the truth and the life. He leads me beside quiet water, restores my soul and guides in the path of right. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. A stranger's voice they do not know or follow. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Yes, to me, Jesus is the good shepherd. The way and the truth and the light. He leads me beside quiet water. Restores 
restores my soul and guides in the path of right. Yes, he leads me beside quiet waters. Restores my soul and guides in the path of right. The Good Shepherd. Well, I would like you to uh, come with me and uh, uh, we will show you a beautiful, beautiful scene. Uh, and this is uh, a reason why I love to be in the prairies. We, we appreciated being in Linden, Alberta because we were uh, quite accessible to Manitoba. Uh, we were still very accessible to Salmon Arm, BC and British Columbia. Uh, we carried on our ministry in the and the uh, KRCC, Bear Creek, and a Rayleigh Camp. Uh, in fact, we sometimes went to, all the way to the coast and ministered in some of the prisons there in the Fraser Valley. And uh, one of the beautiful ones was William Head Institution just outside of Victoria, BC. We've been there numerous times. But I would like, to, uh, like you to come with me and uh, show you another beautiful country scene uh, as we carry on in chapter five. I'm back. Uh, a different scene. A different scene. I still like it. I still like the wonderful scenery of the of the harvest fields, the the turning colors on the trees, and so forth. Um, yeah. After uh, we had left the uh, Western Prison Outreach and uh, set out on our own. Uh, we struggled with the with the economics and so on, but uh, there were some people that responded. Of course, as I already mentioned, uh, we wrote a lot of letters to a lot of people, and uh, um, then we in 1989, uh, the Lord spoke to us and said, uh, uh, approach some gentlemen to see if they would serve as a board of directors to. Uh, to form your own uh, registered organization, which we did. And uh, uh, sure enough, uh, right in the Linden area, we found uh, a number of gentlemen that were willing to serve on the board of directors. And one of them was very acquainted in dealing with government departments and so forth. And so he was extremely helpful in getting uh, the uh, Gospel Troubadours Prison Fellowship registered. And uh, we are so grateful for that. And of course, in the meantime, we were traveling back and forth across the Western Canada, especially, and uh, uh, festivals, churches, functions, you name it, uh, wherever we could. We, and we would wanted to let the people know that we were, uh, our number one priority was prison ministry. And, and yet at the same time, we used music and song as a tool wherever we went to contact people, to get close to people, and so on. And uh, uh, there were a couple of organizations that I actually wrote a, a song for when they asked us to come and sing at their annual uh, wind-ups or whatever the case may be. Uh, one of them was a, an organization in Didsbury that wanted to raise funds and uh, in, in ranchers were getting uh, beef cattle in, uh, feeding beef cattle uh, for, for uh, charity purposes. And so they asked whether we would come and sing there and I wrote a song for that particular function and I called the song God Owns the Beasts. There's farmers and ranchers who work most of their life feeding cattle and birds and swine. Many do not remember Jehovah God said all the beasts of the field are mine. God the Lord, the mighty one speaks, every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills, and I know every bird, yes, the creatures of the field are mine. Some folks are like rustlers and cattle thieves too. Livestock in great numbers they hoard. 
They brag when they win and complain when they lose, never giving a thought or a dime to the Lord. God the Lord, the mighty one speaks, every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills, and I know every bird. Yes, the creatures of the field are mine. You are stewards, not owners. That's what Jesus said. Look after my things while I'm gone. You'll receive a reward if you're faithful and true. I keep a record in a book of all things that are done. God the Lord, the mighty one speaks, every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills, and I know every bird, yes, the creatures of the field are mine. Said the creatures of the field are mine. Yeah, so we went and uh, sang for that uh, annual function for this group of people and uh, uh, were blessed by doing it. And uh, then there was another, uh, there was a chapter of Christian truckers. They were back in Salmon Arm and, and they were going to have an annual festival or annual uh, function. And they asked whether we would come and sing there for them and whether I could write a song for them. So I did. Now, it is interesting to note that this particular song, has been a favorite. This has been a favorite with an awful lot of Hutterite, young Hutterite girls. Now, I don't know why, but they would request it. Now, we had, uh, especially in Manitoba, there were a number of Hutterite colonies that we would go and sing at and had a lot of friends there uh, and so forth. And so uh, we found out about this, that these, these young Hutterite girls, they just loved this song. Maybe they were just dreaming and wishing that they could ride with the young men of the colonies in their big trucks. But the name of this song is The Truck and Christian Parable. One day a Peterbilt parked at a truck stall. In his mind he knew for sure he was the king of all the road. His chrome was shining and his cat was a purring. He was shaking his dip tennis in defiance of his load. Just then an international parked beside him. Said to you, Pete, I want to tell you I'm a tractor, that's for sure. They started me by building farm malays for all them farmers. I think that I'm quite humble and I know that I am pure. Tractor, that is. Oh, the silence of the moment soon was shattered by screaming tires and air horns in an awful cloud of dust. With Kenworth in the lead, Ford and Jimmy were scrambling. They were jockeying for position, trying to pass a greyhound bus. Then snorting round the back, there came a liner. He heard old International, and I tell you, he turned white. He roared, we started building trucks, and now we're building tractors. Spat air from his air tanks, then he waited for the fight. When the dust cloud passed, they're turning off the highway. Was Mac with winch and gin pulls, looked like he was down on luck. As he thought of all the jobs he'd done and he heard the others boasting, he was thankful and he told himself, I'm glad I'm just a truck. Well, we Christians sometimes are like all those trucks were. We boast and brag and talk of all the great things we can do. We work ourselves to a point of forgetting all about the driver. We better keep our eyes on Jesus 
then we'll do what he asks us to. That song has been requested many, many times. Uh, was a favorite to many people. Many people got the idea of uh, these, this parable. And I've driven enough truck to know that, yeah, there is some prejudices in terms of what truck you drive and so on and so forth. Uh, but those prejudices also exist in the realm of Christianity, in churches and so forth. And uh, when you really get into uh, uh, ministry and you, you sh meet a lot of different people, you find out about these things. And uh, I've always been concerned about that, that uh, I wanted to be neutral. I wanted to feel comfortable going into whatever church, whatever Christian organization, uh, I did not want to be prejudiced because after all, if we do not keep our eyes on Jesus, we will be defeated. We, we will struggle and flounder around and cause more trouble than we will solve. And I would rather be a problem solver than a troublemaker. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to come with me for coffee. Uh, coffee in the dining hall. <laughs> And uh, maybe I can get Carol to help me with uh, the closing song of this program. Uh, so join us uh, in the dining hall, would you? coffee places <laughs> right here in the dining hall oh Carol's here uh, would you come and sing this last song with me uh, you know uh, we have we have through the years gotten a number of plaques haven't we dear yeah. these ones in the back back of us here mm -hmm. a number of uh, plaques of appreciation from various institutions Edmonton Bowdoin Drumheller Fort Saskatchewan uh, and you know it's always nice to get a, a get a plaque of appreciation. We have many of them, far more than are what's hanging on the wall here. But we have also used various ways of ministry in terms of testimonies and preaching and, and of course uh, music and song has always been a, a major tool uh, in, our, in our ministry. But one of the things that we learned was that uh, there is no substitute for the reading of God's Word. That's right. The reading of God's Word ultimately important and uh, today in prison ministry I do largely uh, studies Bible studies but the the Word of God is so powerful in it and we have really come to conclude that that is the most important tool the Word of God uh, so it's it's wonderful to use that but I would like to close this set with a song that I wrote for uh, friends that gave me a job in Manitoba for 10 years uh, working with horses every spring and then during the summer I'd sometimes be there at Simcoe Ranch and, and uh, this song is about the owners of Simcoe Ranch great supporters of the Gospel Troubadours Prison Fellowship Ministry through the years uh, Just uh, we just really appreciate yes. the support they have been to us so this is a song that I wrote about those folks well the year was 45 when the sun first hit his face, most people didn't know, but this boy was in the race. He grew up working hard, was not the lazy kind. Horses and cows were mostly on his mind. He didn't have much time for school books and such. His teachers once told him, you won't amount to much. But if the truth were known, might be what's on his range, would buy all they are worth, and he'd still have some change. <laughs> Got himself a wife, and she sure made a man. 
Together they would work on jobs away from home, but the work would never end till the work at home was done. There were days of sweat and toil, frustrations and loss, but they wouldn't give up hope, no matter what the cause. When it seemed that they would lose the cows and all their land, they bought a band of horses to make their last stand. God blessed them with three children, as healthy as could be. They all learned how to work, nobody rode for free. When things were looking up, and the ranch began to grow, herds and land increased, and it all began to be show. Daddy asked for blessings, but he also thanked the Lord. Mama taught the children the stories from God's Word. Now the battles are never over till the last main dog is hung. But they know what it will take, and they know life can be fun. Now I have to learn the pleasure of riding side by side through sunshine, snow, and rain, and I am satisfied. These folks have found a way, a blessing from above, to give even when it hurts, now that to me takes love. They opened up their home when the going was tough. They helped the down and out when they didn't have enough. But if you give them praise, they will answer with a nod. We may have done the work, but the glory goes to God. Yeah, wonderful people. Well, okay, chapter six is going to deal with music day. Uh, in the early 90s, I believe it was 92, maybe 93, uh, we started music days. And we're gonna, uh, the next chapter is gonna talk about music days, which have been going on through all those years, very, very close to 30 years of music days. And uh, we'll talk about that in chapter six. God bless you folks. Really good. Uh, we will see you next time.